going to do now is I'm just going to show you um, what an overarching organisational report will look in the premium version of the tool. And so here, as you can see, there's two different types of reports. There's the single assessment report and the HSC MSD total organisational report. So we'll start with the organisation perspective. You can see 220 assessments have come through and been completed. And this is how the report is shown. Um, at the top here, this is where we're looking to develop benchmarking data. As more organisations start to use the tool, we'll be able to put different averages um, and, and benchmarkings depending on scores. But at the moment, it will just give you your, your scores as you're tallying within the, all the data. Um, but the next section here is where we look into the number of assessments for you. So it will show you um, in total 220 assessments have completed with 129 lift, 51 carry and 40 team. Um, the charts help you identify which has been completed by what location and where. And so you can see that London is the, the larger site and Mark has completed the most. Um, it will then tell you the assessments completed over time. So it might be that because there's only been 42 in the last 30 days, you may want to put a little bit of a push on that to increase that. You can also look at the average assessment score over time. So as you can see with carry, it came down, but it's gone slightly up again. Teams, there was a miss. Um, and so you can see where they're trending over the time period. And then it will break down each assessment based on the key areas of results. So this is something that the HSC um, inspectorate use when they come and, and assess a risk at your site. Um, they use critical injury, high priority injury or medium priority injury. And so we felt that it was important to put the risks in the same process as they would use. So anything with a high score and in the purple colour of um, an actual risk of serious personal injury, which are critical, um, we've put at the top here for you. So this would be the, the areas that we expect you to follow up first of all um, and really identify. And, and is there a theme? Maybe there's an assessor who um, is always in purple, in which case maybe it's a, a training issue rather than an issue with the task. He could be being, being a bit overzealous. But you have the opportunity to see the critical risks, the high priorities, and then the medium priorities as well. So this should help you identify and follow up. If there was a particular assessment you wanted to follow up on, I'll show you in a second, but you can. So say task nine, Cardiff, Mark, or remember that, and I'll show you how to find that particular assessment in a second. Um, within the next area of the report, what the tables now focus on is the specific locations. So here you can see um, it's broken down again by serious, significant um, and possible moderate. Um, the total number and then the different sites. So here you see London has the most. Um, and that's great if you know that London is your largest site um, and so you'd expect that. But if Edinburgh is your largest site um, and they're only coming up with one assessment, you may want to follow up and go, oh, that's interesting. So what are they doing in Edinburgh, if it's the same size as London, that London could potentially be implementing too? Why are they having a, um, a different result? And, and let's see if we can follow up on that. The same with the assessors. So here what you can now see is that Mark is the individual who's completed most, most scores and he's got the most with critical. Um, he's done quite a lot. Now that's great if you know Mark as the assessor is the one who commonly completes them all. But if it's Simon, then why is Simon's results lower than Mark's? And, and what, what is he doing? Who's the most experienced on the team? And, and is there something you can learn from, from one assessor to the next? So it's about creating a cohesive joined up experience. Uh, the next section here we'll look into the scores by risk factors. So this section helps to identify common risk factors across all assessments. Um, so within here you see there's, a, there's quite a lot within the red for grip on load for example. Um, and say that was really high, that was in the 60s. You'd know that actually 
there's quite a problem with the grip on load. So it might be that from an organisational perspective, you could look into getting new boxes for the whole organisation. And what this will do is this will actually help to fix um, any issues that you face for all of the um, assessments and all the other assessors. So that's a real quick fix that you wouldn't be able to identify and create a solution for from just the assessment. By seeing it from this way, you'll be able to go, oh, that's actually something we should look into. The same with floor surface or any of the factors you see. And it's the same, it's broken down for carry and for team tasks as well. Um, next, we've included something which we'd love your feedback on. Um, here we give you the average mean scores by location. And I mean, again, this is actually quite interesting because it tells you the number of the assessments and then the average mean scores, the lowest and then the highest. And so you can see Aberdeen on average is doing it. Norwich with nine is actually doing great with a 7.2. So what are they doing there to keep their assessment uh, results low? And is this something that we can implement across the whole group? Do they have a certain manager there who's just really good at completing assessments or really good at putting people through the risks? Um, and they have a really good induction process. That might be something that then you can see and replicate across all of the other sites. So um, this is a new way of thinking about assessments and risks but we're interested to hear your feedback on this section. And then finally, you have a list of all the assessments that have ever taken place through that link that are associated with this report. So um, this means you can identify and have a look at any of them. And this next section here will enable you to uh, further break that down. But at the end, we also have some what's next and some solutions here if you did need any support around MSDs and links through HSE solutions. So what I'm gonna show you now is actually how you'd identify and track down that single assessment report. Um, I think we've identified that we wanted to look at task nine which is on the 9th, so let's try and find task 9. If I can find it. There we go. And so now what I've done is I've used the full text of what have I tasked, and now I'm going to click on the single assessment report. And so what this will bring up for me is that specific task, task 9, Cardiff, Mark, um, and we can see now why there's a part of the banding colour. Um, there was an issue with load weight and frequency. However, no control measures were put in place. Um, uh, and Mark didn't specify which team members were involved either or the items being handled. So it might be a case of, well, we want Mark to follow up on this. Um, and so you can actually have a look at that and, and talk Mark through. And now, we, now you might want to go, well, actually, let's have a look at all of Mark's assessments. So now what you can do is you can come down to filter Uh, click on mark, press OK. So now when we hit click on the organisational report, that filter is going to now be applicable. So now we're filtering just by Mark's assessments. And we can see his scores and how they've changed. We can see the number of assessments Mark's completed in the different locations they're based at and whether he did them over 360, 30 days in the spread, how his scores relate to each other over time. And then we can see his suggested areas for improvement. So these are just the results that he needs to follow up on um, that are related to him. He may want to then uh, apply a further filter, um, in which case he'd like to have a filter per assessor and then per site. And so you might want to do one per site for Norwich, for example. And so you can further apply filters to split the data down and deliver them to whoever needs them at that point. Um, it might be that you didn't have a mark on this and you just included Norwich for a Norwich perspective. But here you can really start to see, well, he's only done one assessment within Norwich. Um, and it was on, it was 90 days ago. And you'll be able to identify the particular task as well. There's a lift score, uh, changing water 
copy, you can see it there. So these filters do enable you to then really split the data down and drill down and um, and deliver them to who needs them at that point and, and enable you to follow up on that as well.